Good morning. I am here um, talking about Romans chapter 10, and I want to talk about verses 14, 15. Um, verses 14 and 15 in Romans chapter 10 is the verses I highlighted this morning. It says, how then will they call on him whom they have not believed, and how are they to believe in him who they've not heard? How are they to hear without someone preaching, and how are they to preach unless they are sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of uh, those who preach good news. And as I was thinking ab ab about these particular verses, um, a couple thoughts came to mind. Um, one is that this passage highlights the importance of missions and particularly evangelism. Uh, of course, that is pretty obvious as you're reading this, but uh, I was thinking about what that looks like in our particular uh, culture because I, I mean, rarely would I find very many people in our culture who've never heard of Jesus. But I would venture to say that many people have never really heard the gospel, the good news about um, Jesus Christ. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a little bit about what that good news is, and then I'm going to talk about um, something else, and then I'm going to give my, my particular story. So this is going to be a longer video, and you're welcome to obviously shut it off anytime that you want to, but I'm looking forward to sharing you with you my story of how I came to believe that Jesus truly is the Son of God that God had promised who went to a cross and uh, took my sin. So what is good news? Good news uh, obviously starts with a desperate situation, and our desperate situation as human beings, according to the scriptures. Now, I believe the scriptures are true, and that is my, the foundation for what I believe. And so uh, I, I believe that reality bears this out, but the the truth of the matter is that scripture is what I'm basing my uh, belief system on. And, and so that's where I'm going to start. The scripture tells us that um, after God created the world, that man rebelled against God. And um, that means that we ever since that time, since Genesis chapter three, we've been separated. Mankind have been separated from uh, God. And we, because of our sin, which quite frankly deserves condemnation and more than that demands condemnation because God is holy and righteous and must um, punish uh, sin. Uh, he has, it, it, this is part of his justice. He has to bring sin into account for it's, it's just condemnation. And, um, but yet, in Genesis chapter 3, we see a, a beautiful uh, promise that uh, God gave to Adam and Eve um, that there was a, a seed that was going to come and he was going to crush um, Satan's uh, head. And essentially what that is talking about is really kind of reversing this this curse. We have the curse of the fall is that we're separated from God and that um, we now live in a frustrated, uh, broken world. And and so um, Jesus did then come uh, many thousands of years later as God continued to promise that seed to come through the nation of Israel. And he finally came and uh, he died on a, a cross to deal with sin once and for all through his death. And then he went even further by breaking the curse of death by rising from the grave uh, three days later. And, and so not only is our sin forgiven, but we have now um, death has been defeated. And so he, he, took, a, he took care of our death problem. Um, now, we're still going to physically die unless Jesus comes back. And, um, but the, the likelihood of us physically dying is like really good. <laughs> We're going to physically die, but uh, it, as you look at the scriptures, our soul is what makes up who we are. We are body and and soul, and one one day these bodies that have been frustrated 
been fallen are under the curse are going to going to the ground they're going to decay um, and then one day uh, those that uh, one day they will be resurrected um, and we will then be united our soul and our body will be again united um, which is a, a, a beautiful thing but uh, uh, so Jesus broke the curse of death through his resurrection from the dead and he stands ready to forgive um, the sin and, and absolve the guilt of those who trust in him, in Jesus Christ as savior from sin and true, the true son of God. And that has been my reality. I, I, I want to, I, I say that because the content matters, you know, um, when we share the gospel, um, content matters. We got to make sure that we're sharing the right message and not just that, uh, you know, Jesus is your buddy. Um, it's more than that. He is your savior and Lord. He's the true son of God. He's the king of kings. And, 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 that, and that is incredibly significant. But I also want to say that we spread good news with a, a message of hope through um, through the gospel. We got to make sure that we're spreading this good news. But we do, our nonverbals, our nonverbals actually speak louder um, than you think. Nonverbals think uh, speak louder than what you think. So if you you, you come across angry, pompous, judgmental, uh, you know, your finger pointing, a bunch of platitudes, arrogant, self righteous, I mean, all those things they come across. These nonverbals come across uh, to people, and, and they they're not helpful, um, and they speak loud, and they sometimes can be a barrier to people actually hearing a message of hope that um, Jesus Christ indeed is the Son of God and has come and died to rescue us from sin and was raised to life three days later to deliver us from death. And, and I will say this, that your story of redemption will speak volumes to people, that it's personal. This is your, your journey. Um, and for me, that I, I wanna share a little bit about my journey. And my journey doesn't um, usually go like people um, think uh, in terms of I'm, I'm a pastor. Uh, oftentimes people, people will just assume that uh, um, you're, you were raised in the church. This, this is something that your um, family was into and, and, and that sort of thing. And the, and the reality is that, that this is not, that was not true in my case. If you know my background, I was not raised in a um, a Christian home. Excuse me. <coughs> no, I don't have the corona. And but I was not raised in a Christian home, and I was uh, taken from my dad um, when I was a year old um, by my mom, and didn't even know my dad for many many. Uh, years. Very broken situation with my mom. She had a lot of um, uh, struggles, a lot of issues. Um, uh, alcohol was one of them. Uh, she was in and out of relationships. I've been married. Uh, she had been married seven times and um, just uh, there was just a lot of craziness that went on in my house. I know, I know what it's like to um, run when you're in, in trouble. I know what it's like to watch your mom get beat um, by one of your stepdads. I know what it's like um, to just see constant fighting. Um, uh, anytime you mix uh, alcohol, my, my mom's pattern was um, get drunk, get in a fight and run. And, and you know, I'm not, not trying to, to, to bash her. Um, I'm just saying that's, this is the reality of what my life was uh, like, and it wasn't until um, I was in fourth grade, I actually, a uh, situation came up, my mom got in a fight, called my dad, and uh, at this at this point, we had actually moved back to Ohio, where I was born, and my dad came in and got myself my, and my two sisters, and uh, we lived with him for a while, and he did go to church, and, uh, um, and so for about uh, almost four years, a little less than four years, about three and a half years, I was living with my dad and we went to um, a, a church 
but I, I didn't understand anything, didn't care at that point. Um, my uh, older sister ended up going back to live with my mom and six months later I went back uh, because I wanted to be with my sister. I, I actually liked the, the structure of living with my dad and um, but I wanted to be with my sister. So I went to, to live with uh, my mom again and we lived one day in Dayton, Ohio. My younger sister got into some trouble and we moved uh, to Tennessee. And uh, that was the end of my seventh grade year. And <clears throat> while I was in Tennessee, of course, patterns were still there, alcoholism. Um, uh, man, I can't tell you how many times I have watched um, either my mom or my younger sister um, try to commit suicide. It was uh, just a broken situation. Uh, when I was a sophomore in high school, I went to a tent revival with some friends who had invited me and I was there at the church and, uh, um, you know, the, the preacher said, hey, if you don't want to go to hell, come down here and say this prayer. And, and the reality is I, <laughs> I don't want to go to hell, you know, and so I went down and I, and I prayed a prayer, and, but nothing changed in my life, nothing. Because my motivation wasn't Jesus at that point. I could care less about Jesus. I was more focused on the fact that I didn't want to go to, to hell. And so nothing really changed in my life. Um, fast forward to the middle of my junior year, my mom had already left um, for Texas. I was living with my older sister at the time and knew that she just could not hand, she could not support me anymore and um, through a variety of circumstances. So I went back to live with my dad. And I got involved immediately with uh, the youth group at the church that we went to uh, before. And for the first time, I saw people living out the gospel. And that was attractive to me. Um, people that, that said, hey, this is, this is what I um, say I believe. And I'm actually living it out. And they were passionate about their faith. It meant something to them. And, uh, and, and, uh, and even in my own experience, uh, they took me in and they surrounded me. Um, and I felt for the first time, like I belonged, um, somewhere with these people that hardly knew me, but yet, um, were not just passionate about their faith, but they, they were loving towards me. And anyway, over the course of the next couple of months, the light bulb came on and I went, Oh, the gospel is all about Jesus. And he he will forgive my sin based on his work and not my uh, good works. And which was really good news for me because I was, uh, I was just a very broken kid. And so 17 years old, I came to know Christ and everything changed for me immediately. Now, I know that's not everybody's experience, but that was my experience. Uh, everything changed. Um, I developed a hunger to know God through his word. I knew nothing uh, about the Bible. And, uh, and so I just started reading and soaking in everything, listening to teaching. Um, it was pretty phenomenal. And then uh, at, at, I ended up going to Cedarville um, College, Cedarville University now, and, um, and, I, and I studied um, and soaked in as much theology as I could possibly uh, get because I just wanted to know what the Bible said. And I, cause I wanted to know God, I wanted to know this Jesus that, um, loved me so much. And, uh, over the years, my, not only has my love for Jesus grown, but my convictions about the scriptures, my convictions about my faith have been more and more solidified. That doesn't mean I didn't go through times of, of doubt. Uh, matter of fact, those times of doubt drove me to wrestle with very difficult questions, which ended up solidifying my faith more and more and, and more. And so I believe that Jesus Christ indeed is the promised Messiah. And he came and he died on a cross, and I believe that he rose again. Now, I can believe that because the scripture says it, but I also believe it because God has done a transformative work in my own life. And I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So 
but that is my story. I hope it's an encouragement to you. And maybe you're listening to this and, um, you know, you never, never have wrestled with these tough questions of, is this Jesus thing real? Um, is, is what the Bible says, is, does what the Bible say is true? And I just want to challenge you, if, if you don't believe the Bible is true, then um, I want to challenge you to really read it, okay? It's an amazing, amazing story that can that connects this person Jesus all the way through the Old Testament, um, and of course it's culminated in the, the New Testament. Um, it's a pretty phenomenal book. But anyway, it's my story, and go tell your story. Go tell people that Jesus is indeed the Christ, and He loves them, and He will forgive them of their sin if they would just trust in Him. Blessings.